We were under the uh, impression that we had all the paperwork done for the dogs. We were there with the dogs in front of everybody. Uh, there might have been other things smuggled. <laughs> oh yeah! Today we're learning English with Johnny Depp on Jimmy Kimmel Live. So in today's lesson, we'll hear about a funny and strange incident that happened between Johnny Depp and the Australian government. And if you're new here, every week we make fun lessons just like this one so that you can understand fast-speaking natives like Johnny Depp without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Kisila said that since she found our channel, her comprehension of fast-speaking natives has increased a ton. And yours will too. Just hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. You and your wife got into some, I don't know, is it legal trouble? Is, it, is that a fair way to describe it? I mean, if, if that's legal uh, trouble, uh, it's, it's by far the most interesting I've ever uh, experienced. You went to Australia, <laughs> did shooting Pirates of the Caribbean. Indeed. And the, um, and your dogs, you brought dogs into the country. You, did you smuggle the dogs into the country? No, the dogs were, were we, 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 we were under the uh, impression that we had all the paperwork done for the dogs. We were there with the dogs in front of everybody. Uh, there might have been other things smuggled. <laughs> um, but not dogs. They, well, they seem to miss that bit, but... Um, <laughs> So the I'm minute, not saying you, 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 you might have been, you know, you just, I mean, could you, have been. You brought your dogs with you. You're there working for a long period of time, yeah. and it's a normal thing to do. You bring your two yeah. little dogs, yeah. and then, and then the minister of agriculture, <laughs> for I guess for all of Australia, <laughs> I don't know exactly how it works there. Yeah, holds a press conference. He sure did. And says this. Look at this. Comes to the next issue, which is a gentleman by the name of John Christopher Depp. Uh, 51 years old, um, otherwise AKA Jack Sparrow, and he's decided to bring to our nation two dogs without actually getting the proper certification and the, the proper permits required. Basically looks like he snuck them in. We found out he snuck them in because we saw them taking it to a poodle groomer. Now, <laughs> Mr. Depp has to either take his dogs back to California or we're gonna have to euthanize them. What kind of a maniac is this? He's gonna kill your dogs if you don't send them back to California. You and your wife got into some, I don't know, is it legal trouble? Is, it, is that a fair way to describe it? So Kimmel starts by mentioning that Depp and his wife got into some legal trouble. If you get into trouble, that simply means you got involved in a problematic situation. You did something which later caused you problems. Legal as an adjective with two different applications. In this case, it describes something or somebody related to the law, like a legal document or a legal profession, such as a lawyer or judge. So legal trouble is a problem related to the law. The other meaning of this word is to describe if something is accepted by the law. For example, legal drugs are drugs that can be sold or distributed in an area. A fair way to describe something or somebody is to give a description that makes sense or that expresses the idea correctly. So Kimmel is asking Depp if it would be correct to refer to the incident he and his wife got involved in as legal trouble. I mean, if, if that's legal uh, trouble, uh, it's, it's by far the most interesting I've ever uh, experienced. The expression by far is used when comparing something or someone with others in order to show how great the difference is between them. Example, she was by far the smartest student. What other expression could you use in this situation? Check out this other example. Well, Andy, the numbers just came in, and uh, you are by far our best salesman. So yeah. I am uh, promoting you to floor manager. He went to Australia, did shooting indeed. Pirates of the Caribbean. Indeed. Kimmel says Depp was shooting Pirates of the Caribbean, meaning he was working in the production of the film. 
in the context of photography and filming, to shoot is to use a camera to take a picture or record a video. Indeed is a word you can use to add emphasis to a statement. Tell them Hogwarts is no longer safe. It is as we feared, Minerva. The Chamber of Secrets has indeed been opened again. You may also use it to simply express that something is correct, like Johnny Depp did here. He went to Australia, did shooting Pirates of the Caribbean. Indeed. Which is similar to how you would use more informal expressions like, that's right, or, oh yeah. Check out this example with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Tell me something. There is another Jack Sparrow out there selling my good name. An imposter. Indeed, but an imposter with a ship. He went to Australia, did shooting do. Pirates of the Caribbean. Indeed. And the, um, and your dogs, you brought dogs into the country. You, did you smuggle the dogs into the country? If you secretly bring something into a country, that is, without declaring it to the authorities, you are smuggling it into that country. Things are normally smuggled as to avoid having to pay any fees for importation, or because importing that object would be illegal in that country. So Kimmel is asking Depp if he tried to secretly bring his dogs to Australia without declaring them. No, the dogs were, were we, 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 we were under the uh, impression that we had all the paperwork done for the dogs. We were there with the dogs in front of everybody. If somebody is under the impression that something is true, they believe that it is true. This is usually said when the person is found to be mistaken about what they believed. It was actually not true. Now, I was under the impression <clears throat> that these were illegal. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes forbidden fruit tastes the sweetest, doesn't it? So Johnny says he actually did try to bring his dogs into the country, but that he believed he had all the paperwork done for the dogs. We were under the uh, impression that we had all the paperwork done for the dogs. Paperwork refers to any task done that involves many pieces of paper, like paying bills or filling out forms. Oh, I can't believe you're not gonna be here for Christmas. You're really not coming back. Yeah, we have all this paperwork that needs to be filed by the end of the year. If I don't get it done, I'll be fired. So in the case of what he says here, to have all the paperwork done would mean to fill out all the forms and take care of all the documentation necessary to legally bring the dogs to Australia. We were under the uh, impression that we had all the paperwork done for the dogs. We were there with the dogs in front of everybody. Uh, there might have been other things smuggled. <laughs> So here, Depp humorously says there's a chance he, or someone else, smuggled other things into Australia, but not his dogs. Then he goes on to say that customs, authorities at the airport, seemed to miss that bit, meaning they missed that part, and did not catch the other things he apparently smuggled. But not dogs. Hey, well, they seemed to miss that bit, but... Um... <laughs> So the I'm minute, saying you, you, you might have been, you know, you just, I mean, you, could have been. So might have is a modal verb, which indicates that there is a chance that it's possible that something happened in the past. Example, I just heard a very loud noise. It might have been an explosion. Also, did you notice how he pronounced this expression after contracting it? There might have been other things smuggled. So instead of enunciating the words might have, which would make it sound more like it's spelled, natives will often drop the V sound at the end, resulting in what we just heard from Johnny. There might have been other things smuggled. There might have been other things smuggled. This is something commonly done with other expressions too. Although he does include a soft V sound at the end of could have here, might have been, you know, you just could have been. You're You'll often hear from natives it being pronounced like coulda. Now, might have and could have are similar modal verbs, but with a slightly different meaning. And you've probably heard of other constructions like should have or would have before. But do you know what they mean? Let's learn more about these expressions and their shortened pronunciation coulda, woulda, shoulda with this quick lesson by Justin. So coulda, woulda, and shoulda are actually the contractions of the contractions of could have, would have, and should have. Could have contracts into could've and coulda. 
should have becomes should have and shoulda, and would have becomes would have and woulda. Now, while many people will tell you this is totally colloquial slang, not correct. We actually use this in everyday language. We use this in presentations and all formal and informal English situations. You cannot, however, use this in formal writing. It's okay to use shoulda, coulda, and woulda in informal text messages or chats. So coulda, woulda, and shoulda, or also the pronunciation of could have, would have, and should have, are used across the English language. In a variety of senses, but today to start with, I wanted to focus on coulda, woulda, shoulda as an expression. This expression really helps us understand why shoulda, coulda, and woulda are known as the modals of lost opportunity. We all know people who need to hear this expression. The people who always lament or complain or cry about lost opportunities. They imagine their lives in what could have been, in what should have been, in what would have been. The people who always say, "Oh, I could have done better if I had studied harder," or "I should have done this," or "If I had only known, I would have done this." So, coulda, woulda, shoulda is more like, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, but you didn't. So, let's get down to action. Let's change our lives now. Okay, now let's look at the crazy pronunciation of coulda, shoulda, woulda. How do we get coulda from could have, or shoulda from should have? Or woulda from whatever. What about a lot of, a lot of, a lot of from a lot of? Well, the truth is, this is a rule. It's a tendency. It's a pattern that happens across all Native American, especially connected speech. Okay, so the pattern is whenever we have the of, which is present in the word of, or the ve contraction with have on many words like could have. It's reduced to a,、uh. and you see this in coulda from could have, or woulda from would have, or shoulda from should have. But you also see this in other words, like for example, a lot of becomes a lotta. One of these becomes one of these. I'm out of here becomes I'm out of here. So coulda, shoulda, and woulda are just one great example of how natives actually speak in real life. Would you like to learn more real life English like this? Well, we have a really fun way for you to do it with our Fluent with Friends course. In this 48 week course, you will learn alongside the first two seasons of the TV series Friends, with 20 plus page PDF power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. You can try it for free right now with our three part master class. Just click up here or down in the description below to learn more and sign up. You brought your dogs with you. You're there working for a long period of time.、Yeah. It's a normal thing to do. You bring your two、yeah. little dogs,、yeah. and then and then the minister of agriculture. <laughs> in politics, a minister is a high government official who is in charge of or has an important position in a particular department. For example, the minister of education or the minister of agriculture. So Kimmel. Who is not sure if the minister he is referring to is responsible for all of Australia says, and then the minister of agriculture, <laughs> for I guess for all of Australia, <laughs> I don't know exactly how it works there. Yeah, holds a press conference. I guess is an expression similar to I believe or I think, which you would use if you are not entirely sure of what you are saying. A press conference is a meeting between a government or business and reporters from the media, done in order to make a public statement and answer questions. So, in this sense, the verb to hold means to organize and promote an event, such as a meeting, conference, or election. Holds a press conference. He sure did. And says this. Look at this. It comes to the next issue, which is a gentleman by the name of John Christopher Depp. Uh, 51 years old,、um, otherwise AKA Jack Sparrow. AKA is an abbreviation meaning also known as, used to introduce the other name or nickname that a person has. <laughs> Test subject D7, AKA Betsy, fear response study. So the minister says Depp brought his two dogs to Australia without the proper certification and the proper permits required. 
and he's decided to bring to our nation two dogs without actually getting the proper certification and the, the proper permits required. Proper is an adjective for something or somebody that is appropriate or suitable to a situation, or that is considered legitimate. Basically looks like he snuck them in. We found out he snuck them in because we saw them taking it to a poodle groomer. Snuck is an alternative way to say sneaked, the past form of the verb to sneak. If you sneak something or somebody in a place, you are secretly taking something or somebody somewhere. That normally implies that you have permission to enter, but the object or person you are trying to bring in does not. Example, they don't allow cameras at the concert, but he took his and sneaked it in anyway. You know, if you want, we could sneak the dog back in and Chandler wouldn't even know. It's not gonna work. I had that dog there for three days and Chandler had no idea. He's not so smart. Note that this expression is different from somebody to simply sneak in a place. If you sneak in somewhere, you are entering a place quietly and in secret, perhaps without permission or a ticket. Basically looks like he snuck them in. We found out he snuck them in because we saw them taking it to a poodle groomer. Generally speaking, grooming refers to the things that people do to keep themselves clean and make their face, hair, and skin look nice. So a poodle groomer would be a person who cleans and cares for poodle dogs. Now, Mr. Depp has to either take his dogs back to California or we're gonna have to euthanize them. The word either is used here as a way to refer to one choice between two possibilities. Many learners make the mistake of saying or or to do this. However, this is incorrect in English. You should say either or. This is either madness or brilliance. If you want to make a negative, you should use the construction neither nor. Example, he likes neither chocolate nor vanilla. He will only eat either strawberry or pistachio ice cream. Hey, are you a fan of Johnny Depp? Well then, I would bet that you really love his character, Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. And you can learn from that movie after you finish this video by clicking up here or down in the description below. Now, <laughs> Mr. Depp has to either take his dogs back to California or we're gonna have to euthanize them. To euthanize is to kill, normally an animal, because it is very old or sick, or because there is no one to take care of it. So the minister is saying they will kill Johnny Depp's dogs if he doesn't send them back to the United States. What kind of a maniac is this? He's gonna kill your dogs if you don't send them back to California. In this sense, a maniac is a person who shows extreme symptoms of wild behavior, especially when violent and dangerous. You and your wife got into some, I don't know, is it legal trouble? Is, it, is that a fair way to describe it? I mean, if, if that's legal uh, trouble, uh, it's, it's by far the most interesting I've ever uh, experience. He went to Australia Didn't shooting do. Pirates of the Caribbean. Indeed. And the, um, and your dogs, you brought dogs into the country. You, did you smuggle the dogs into the country? No, the dogs were, were we, 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 we were under the uh, impression that we had all the paperwork done for the dogs. We were there with the dogs in front of everybody. Uh, there might have been other things smuggled. <laughs> But not dogs. They, well, they seem to miss that bit. But um, so the I'm not saying you, you, you might have been. You know, you just could have been. You brought your dogs with you. You're there working for a long period of time, yeah. and it's a normal thing to do. You bring your two yeah. little dogs, yeah. and then and then the minister of agriculture, <laughs> for I guess for all of Australia, <laughs> I don't know exactly how it works there. Yeah, holds a press conference. He sure did. And says this. Look at this. Comes to the next issue which is a gentleman by the name of John Christopher Depp, uh, 51 years old, um, otherwise AKA Jack Sparrow. 
and he's decided to bring to our nation two dogs without actually getting the proper certification and the, the proper permits required. Basically looks like he snuck them in. We found out he snuck them in because we saw them taking it to a poodle groomer. Now, Mr. Depp has to either take his dogs back to California or we're going to have to euthanize them. What kind of a maniac is this? He's going to kill your dogs if you don't send them back to California. Ah, uh, yeah, I hope you laughed a lot today and enjoyed understanding 100% of the interview. And there's more where that came from. Check out another one of our fun lessons over here. And now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Ah, uh, yeah.